Alright guys, Touch Grubby here, back again today, and I'm back from holiday, so we have an up-to-date, live, recorded video, and finally we get to talk about this SMG buff, which I was hoping to do a few days ago, but of course I had all the videos pre-recorded before the SMG buff was even announced, so unfortunately I didn't get to talk about it until now, but hopefully it's okay, hopefully you've still enjoyed the content over the last few days, and I did upload a Sinu Anaheim vlog yesterday, which some of you guys are enjoying, and I'll leave that link down below if you want to check it out and you haven't seen it yet, so... Firstly, let's go through the last week's Pro League matches just to conclude them and wrap things through and then we'll go into this SMG buff, what exactly it is in detail and which teams are most likely to benefit and you guys can be interactive as always in the comment section below. So like if you guys enjoy, subscribe if you're new as always, I would greatly appreciate it and let's hop right into it here. So a few teams have locked in their spot in the Pro League uh, playoffs. So uh, I talked about it on uh, Thursday in the Miami video talking about explaining exactly how the entire system works. I'll leave that link down below as well. So FaZe have qualified, even though they're actually behind Gen.G in the standings because they have a lower series win percentage, but because they've played many more games, they've actually locked in their spot, whereas Gen.G haven't quite yet, but uh, pretty much Gen.G are guaranteed to lock it in unless they lose all of their matches. Now Splice have done the same, uh, but what's probably more interesting than this is looking more in detail at the uh, actual individual match results, which we didn't really get a chance to do because I was away and uh, that just is how it is. So look, Tuesday's matches, what really was of note here? Just want to skim through them. 100 Thieves dominated phase, which I thought was interesting because I thought this game was going to be kind of close uh, or at least it might go a game five, at least a game four. We'd see who's the best half point team in the game. Didn't even get to see a second half point because 100 Thieves just smoked him. Um, the Splice reverse swept EG, which was interesting because EG went game five in every one of their series. And yes, here they lose the game five to Splice, an impressive reverse sweep out of them but towards the end of the week Spice were not looking so on the same page let's put it that way uh, phase take down E6 as they did in the bracket and Anaheim and uh, this 100 Thieves LG match was kind of interesting because and also units were looking good but I wanted to talk about that in a second here 100 Thieves played LG. They looked kind of sloppy this series, did 100 Thieves, but they were tested, brought to a game five, and they won it this time. They lost to EG in the first, uh, basically, time they'd played since Anaheim, so I can kind of forgive them for that. And yes, they end up winning against LG here, who are a pretty damn solid team because of the way they beat Spice on the final day. But units take down FaZe, which really was the upset of this final day. I was very impressed with them. They do look very much on the same page, and I was really impressed, honestly, with how they were playing together. And... Uh, uh, putting, on, putting on an absolute clinic, to be honest, on FaZe. And, you know, if you're competitive with FaZe in the hard points, like if you're going like 250 to 247 as they lost a game on Seaside, then you're obviously a good team because FaZe's hard point has been impeccable. Let's put it that way. EG lose another game five, so I'm sure Revan is pulling his hair out. And then, yes, yeah, Spice LG was interesting because Spice, we went to a listening with Temp and, well, with Splice, but also Temp, and, yeah, their communication was not there on the same page. They were clearly having some internal issues. Things that I think they probably can sort out over time, but it's still somewhat concerning. I do think this team can be very good, uh, but, of course, here they get smoked by LG. Difficult to say, in my opinion, that LG have, you know, comprehensively beaten Splice in terms of the roster mania changes that they made. I think we really will have to wait to Miami to see that in more detail because these series, like this series for Splice didn't really matter so much. You know, there, there's always there's always different factors at play in the league, especially given we have a new patch to talk about, which is probably the big deal. But of course, yeah, LG looked very impressive indeed. Nothing else to say about that one. They completely smoked Splice off the map. So these are the SMG changes they made last week. I'll leave the link to the full uh, patch notes down below if you want to see it. We've made new weapon tuning changes. I talked about this for a couple of weeks, but I didn't know it was going to be coming this soon. As part of our efforts to constantly improve the multiplayer experience to help the SMGs and pistols more, be more competitive against assault rifles, we've changed their ballistic profiles to the more traditional hit scan. This means bullets from SMGs and pistols should now hit their targets faster and with higher accuracy, having to lead the target without having to lead the target to account for bullet travel time in multiplayer. 
while we're satisfied with the balance in popularity of each of the weapon classes, we want to make sure SMG and pistol players can go toe to toe with AR users at multiple ranges as the meta evolves. And this is what I heard when I was in Anaheim that they were looking to create a two SMG meta in competitive play by buffing the SMGs to some degree. I heard it was something like a tweak, but and it, you know this does seem to make sense as a tweak, making them now a hit scan rather than ballistic. You guys may not have been aware, but usually or typically so far in this game when you shoot an SMG it kind of works like in blackout the bullets have some travel time and I think they were trying to do that to keep the SMGs on the download to some degree but they've realized that the ARs are actually very very strong and a bit late in the game's life cycle really but you know they have made a change to the SMGs on the whole also the pistols, but really this means that the Sorg, the weapon of choice, is probably going to be used more often. That's what a lot of pros are saying, so let's dive into it. So these are some of the other weapon changes. So pretty much with a hit scan in the game, it means that you'll no longer get kill trades. Kill trades used to happen because, uh, you know, the guy with the Sorg would shoot. They'd always happen in Sorg gunfights, if you guys um, think about it like that. And pretty much this guy, would, the guy who shot the gun would get killed, but then his bullets would keep traveling and then they'd take down the other guys so that's how you get kill trades but they won't be happening anymore and also your bullets will be way more consistent they'll hit the target faster I did get a chance to use it before I went away on holiday and it does feel a lot better and a lot of the pros have been saying the same thing so there was also some issues with this patch where people were like crouching after sliding which I think they've now fixed or at least hopefully they have um, I'm pretty sure they did a hot fix to to fix that one so let's have a look through some tweets here. So, you know, Enable says, the new Sorg Supreme has buffed me. I'm Kyrie on the map. Zuma says, wow, I'm excited to scrim with the new Sorg today and watch some COD on Monday. Life is good. Bant says the following, crazy to think about how good certain teams are going to be now with the hit scan Sorg. And Nikki Nolson says, actually really excited to see how cross players perform at this week's cross division. Sorg players perform at this week's cross division because this gun is, in, is unreal in ranked play, but it could be even better on LAN. So yes, the key thing to note here, back in February when the Maddox changes happened, I think it was in February, you remember when they nerfed the Maddox significantly as recoil was horrible and then they put it back to normal, they were going to implement the new changes into the second week of play. It was a similar situation where the changes came in on like the Tuesday in the first week and then they played out the first week on the old patch and then for the next week of play, the week 12, they decided, or the week, um, you know, whatever the week was at the time, week four or something like that they decided to play with the patch but then they reversed their decision and they decided they would save the patch until we played at Fort Worth so this time it seems like from what I've heard I haven't seen a like an explicit tweet on it but it seems like they will be playing on the new patch for this week 12 so we should be seeing the new Sorg in action this next week of play and we'll just go through some of the matches here Elevate Midnight Recce United some of these may be more one-sided, but we will get to see, you know, Gunless back in action, the new Gen G with Spacely in the team rather than Nagafen. So definitely some spicy matchups this week. No way else to put it than that. And we will see kind of how these teams are playing with this new Sorg. Now, unfortunately, the teams that have played in week 11 will not have a chance to practice with this new meta uh, well at least on LAN they will once it comes to the uh, well CWR Miami which to some degree I think was why they changed their mind back in February and they made both team both matches both sets of weeks be played on the same patch because they didn't want to give one set of teams some sort of an advantage but maybe this time they don't really mind about that they don't think it's a big deal so here we go here are the teams let's have a look through who may benefit the most from this one because of course there's a lot of great teams here there's a lot of teams that have great SMG lines which should come to the forefront this is what I was saying when I was talking about these rosters the potential of having the better SMGs may well improve the teams that are going to have an SMG duo because Optic Gaming, let's have a look at them real quick. A lot of rumors have gone around this team as to what roles exactly they're going to be using. On Anaheim on Sunday night, I heard that they were changing their roles. Karma was going to an SMG, Skump was going to a Maddox. And I always kind of thought that was like a premature reactive change that really in the long term is not going to be working out so well. But... If you can have a situation with TJ and Skump both on your SMGs, in recent times it's been kind of difficult because TJ's been using the Sorg, but at the same time Skump's been kind of 
of using the Maddox a bit more. And then sometimes TJ will put it away and put out the Maddox. So, you know, it's kind of back and forth with what these guys use. Of course, as far as I'm aware, I think they'd be most comfortable both with a Sorg in hand, especially with this new and improved Sorg. And I'd be interested to hear your thoughts below on how much you think it's improved from your perspective, whether you guys have been playing and how many we'll see on a map. Because from what some people have been saying, it's likely we'll see two on the majority of maps. Maybe a map like Frequency, we might even see more than that because it does seem to be, it does seem to have a lot of more um, punch behind its, its fire. And also when you have something like that and it's it seems to be improved in terms of the hit scan. It's also an easier gun to control. The recoil seems easier to control and it has like other benefits as well as just the bullets hit the target faster and you don't have to aim ahead of your target or anything like that. Now E United is one definitely can to consider because a BZ and Simp are somewhat widely considered the best SMG duo in the game, at least the best proven SMG duo in the game. And this could be a good turning point for them because Simp has been pulling out the Maddox at times. abizi has been kind of using it on or off depending on what they need on the map. Because even on a map like Frequency, at some point in the current meta, you're not always seeing uh, like more than one Sorg on the map. So... And some maps, I think the other day, I think in the league this week, LG even pulled out five ARs on one of the maps, some maybe on a gridlock or something like that. They didn't even go for an SMG. So, and that kind of makes sense with their team dynamic as it is right now because their AR line is incredibly filthy. And it maybe will help LG to some degree. The fact that Slack and John, the guys who are going to be on the more struggling end of the spectrum in terms of how well they're performing statistically with how good the rest of the team is maybe that will help them really well because they'll now have a better weapon in their hands they'll be able to create space more effectively so that's another way to look at this the fact that Slack and John are the weak links on on LG at least in theory uh, probably means that the SMG buff could really help LG it's a difficult dynamic because in theory it helps every team like every team's going to improve to some degree uh, it just depends how much it helps individual teams as to how much they move through the rankings because my perspective when I looked at it initially was that well Splice you know, E United, they have incredibly competent SMG duos, like Hook and Jerd are going to be unbelievable, but at the same time, if they're, if they're really dominating the SMG category, then they need the ARs to be able to back them up, and whether they really have that on current form is you know, not so easy to say. Was LG, you know they do. So if Slacked and John, for example, get really, really good on this new Sorg, which is possible, like Slacked, I think, is a, is a good player, and John has been slightly better maybe this week, and maybe a little bit more improvement out of him, would put them in a situation where LG is a dominant team. So that's something to consider. Uh, Dylan as well, like Dylan and Zed on your SMGs is a very scary duo, I think. And this is what really I thought would hurt Team Envious, because right now they're going to be... Like, they're going to be slow as hell. I don't know who even using the second sub. Maybe you give it to Silly. Or uh, you guys were saying Aches when I talked about it in the video, which I can kind of understand, but I just think he's too slow to even be like a bait SMG. Let's put it that way. Uh, Heretics could benefit as well because they're cracked out of their mind. Like, all the teams are going to benefit. It's just which teams benefit more than the other teams is uh, my perspective. If there is going to be a two SMG meta. Um, and I think Gen G deserves a mention here as well. Like, my three picks, maybe four in terms of how good their SMG duos are. Probably E United Splice, then Gen G, I think, in Havoc and Envoy. I, I want to put Reciprocity and Optic in the hat as well for sure. Uh, but you know right now maybe it's between these three in terms of who in terms of like who has the best SMG duo of course you can put like Scump and TJ out there but it's kind of difficult to say because we haven't really seen them too much on SMGs individually uh, in this game was we have seen Havoc and Envoy pull them out at times uh, together so you can kind of see it a little bit more clearly uh, but yeah it's going to be exciting to see Hook off the Maddox and back on the SMG more often and and yeah like it's a very exciting time I wonder what you guys think about these next week's matches let's have a look through them once again just to make it clear so e united optic will close out the week envy optic will be there as well and yes there's a lot of important matches here in terms of who's going to qualify for the playoffs because units and enigma six evil geniuses lg and uau none of these teams can qualify but all the teams in white can still make it in to the top and in division b there's only one spot left for grabs probably heretics will get it so maybe there's not too much competition between the rest but in this situation between reciprocity and mid night this is a very important battle for this fourth place in the in the pool so yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new as always check out the cdb anaheim vlog if you haven't already thank you guys so much for watching as always and i will see you next time